Fistful of Lead, Horse and Musket. Welcome to Fistful of Fridays, where we explore all the joy of Wiley Games' small skirmish actions, in this case set in one of my favorite eras, the French Counter-Revolution. These five fellows are the local law enforcement dispatched to go arrest a number of citizens. See, the king is dead and gone, and now France is a democracy, so the people can have what they want, and if they want the wrong thing, then you just go arrest them. Ain't democracy great? What you're looking at up front is the captain. He's a leader. He's going to roll the D12s. He's got a melee specialist. He'll roll two dice in melee. And he can lunge, which means he gets to melee at a range of two inches. He also has a pistol. He is seconded by a drummer who can use two actions to give the entire team a free recovery roll. And this drummer, he's not much of a fighter, so he's also got a dodge. Now, he does have... You know, a basic knife, and I guess we'll give him a pistol, too. The three soldiers you see in the back are just basic soldiers. They're rolling a D10. They are deft, which means, unlike the rest of the shooters, they only need to take one action to reload. That's going to be kind of big in today's scenario. They have been dispatched to arrest the farmer of this idyllic, peaceful little household because the horns on his cow are too loud. Can't have loud horns. That's not democracy. Unfortunately, what they didn't realize is that all this booty laying around in the yard is a trap designed to get them stuck in the yard where they will be easy prey for the locals. Those are the guys you see down here in the bottom part of your screen. This is their leader, the local Lord Rallier. He is a veteran, again with the D12s. He's cool. He's got sand. Means he ignores his first shock. He's got two pistols and a cane, which we count as a club. His second is an eagle-eyed killer. That's the feller in the yellow, looks like a raincoat. Uh, the eagle eye gives him an extra four inch range on his musket, and then again he's a killer, so plus one on the wound roll. The two fellas on the left here are, are, are gentlemen farmers, the French equivalent of kulaks. They are rangers, which means they ignore terrain penalties, and they are plus one to melee when they are in rough ground. Might not do them a whole lot of good, as you'll see from the scenario. And the three guys over here in the back with the axes, those are the local woodcutters. They are, uh, they are rabble. So they have axes, which are plus one to wound, but they roll d8s and all their activations. And with the gendarmerie uh, already located where they're going to start the fight, we need to figure out where these guys are coming in. But I also need to point out that the goal of the blue jackets over there is to get off the board by way either end of the road, either over the bridge that way or off the road this way. They have to exit the board within two inches of the road. The job of these seven royalists is to stop them. Question is, where are these royalists going to come on the board? To make things interesting and chaotic and to uh, avoid playing any kind of favorites in a battle like this, despite the fact that one side is clearly the good guys and one of the bad guys, I'm going to roll a d8 for each of the Vondeans, and on a 1, they're going to have to come in within 4 inches of the corner over here. On a 3, 5, and 7, and on a 2, they're going to come in within 4 inches of the center of the board here. Two, four, six, eight. All right, so we'll start with the leader, and with a seven, he's going to come on from the corner up here. His second in command is going to come on. We'll reroll that because it's cockamamie. One, three, five. He'll come on in this corner down here. And then we've got the two farmers that don't make a difference, so I'll just roll twice. We've got a seven, and we're going to reroll that. A seven and a one. So we've got two guys up there. We've got one guy in the corner over here. And then we've got three rabble. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to roll three times. Two, four, and six. Naturally enough. So the farmers aren't doing a very good job coordinating their response to this ambush. Or I don't know. Maybe they are. Um, unfortunately, the rangers... Well, this might not be so bad. One thing I'll point out is that the hills are covered with woods. They count as rough going. The... The terrain pieces here count as woods. You cannot move over the features that are in the woods. Excuse me, I should say. It's a three-inch penalty, and these two large rocks block line of sight. The rest of the lock rocks count as um, heavy cover. Let's call this large rock blocking line of sight as well. All of the trees, all the boxes are cover. Trees block line of sight, and nothing else does. And again, we've got soft cover for the hedges and hard cover for all of our stone walls. The hog pen here is will reduce movement by three inches. It's going to cost three inches to cross one inch of this hog pen, and we'll just move the hogs out of the way. Likewise, the the cows here are, you cannot move through them, otherwise they have no effect on the battle. They're just kind of there for 
flavor. With all of that said, I think we are now ready to shuffle and deal. While I shuffle these, I would like to just say, these are the Fistful of Lead Horse and Musket specific. Look, look at these great cards. They have, when you activate a model with the Jack of Spades, he gets a plus one for shooting. I believe the Jack of Clubs gets you a plus one in melee. So you do want to kind of pay attention to those. Having them written on the cards is very nice. Jay Wiley has been kind enough to swing by the channel when I do one of these, you know, call it live plays, you know, post fixed in post live plays, plays. There are things you cannot fix in post, like when I get rules wrong. Jay has been very helpful. He's very accommodating, and I have learned a great deal about how to play this game. Let's see if I can get through one whole game without forgetting any modifier, screwing anything up. Oh, because one thing I should point out that I haven't been doing right is you do get a plus one in melee when you're using a better weapon. And for those of you that are not in the know, if you are a guy with a musket fighting a guy with a knife, you get a plus one in melee. If you have a sword, that's better than the musket. And in fact, they have a nice little list here in the rules that will tell you exactly which weapons are better than which, right? A mounted lance is better than a halberd pike, is better than a sword, better than a bayonet, better than an axe. So the axes down here that our three woodcutters have, whenever they fight anybody with, with either a musket or a sword, they are going to be, their opponent will have a plus one on the combat roll, but if the axes win, they get a plus one on the wound roll. Bear that in mind. And I've already shuffled these cards. I'm going to go ahead and cut them just so that you see that I'm trying to be as even as possible. And I'm going to deal five cards over here for the uh, for the 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 um, the revolutionaries. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to deal five for our royalists who just want to be left alone. How dare they? Calling out. The way the game works, everybody with a king says, yeah, I got a king I want to play. The royalists get a king of diamonds, and they choose to activate. Each figure gets two actions, and we're going to start by activating that woodsman way over there. Now, because that woodsman is a ranger, he can move through these woods with no penalty. By the way, the only two places to cross the stream are the bridge and the ford right here, anywhere else that you attempt to cross, will net you a three inch movement penalty, as it is a rather deep stream. We're gonna move him up eight inches to right here and just take position in cover. That's all he's gonna do. Then we say, hey, who's next? And remember, the, the revolutionaries can go off either end of the board, and it looks like we've only got two guys over here so their best bet, I think, is to go ahead and move. It's going to cost um, two inches to get over any one of these obstacles. Let's bring this guy up five inches to here. Mm. He's going to move to right here, actually. We'll put him in that corner right there with the queen of clubs. No special rules there. Then we count down. Anybody got any tens, nines? No, we got a jack. Plus one to close combat. So I am inclined, even though hmm, he's going to be dealing with a couple of different issues. Hmm, I'm inclined to bring this guy. It'd be nice to be able to bring him up. I'm going to bring him up into cover right here. That's less than 10 inches, so that's two. It's an axeman hiding behind the bridge. That is his two actions. And then we get to the eights. Eight of diamonds, eight of clubs. Now our revolutionaries are going to get to activate two figures. And we're going to bring them into the cow pasture to see if they can get away. But we're going to leave them... Oh man, see, he's, he's in the open, but we don't have anybody that can take a shot at him this turn. So we'll move one to here. And we'll move our, move this guy that's far away. He's going to take to the wall as well. Then we call out, hey, do we got any uh, seven, sixes, fives? Diamonds go before clubs. So our royalists are going to get to go. And I think we'll move this royalist up to the edge of the woods here. That's five inches with his first action. And we might as well go ahead and take a shot with our musket. Now... That is just a... Oh, I'm sorry. He's our second. 
So he's got a range of 16 inches. And as you can see, that's 12 inches. He is at short range for his shot. I'm going to drop a, hey, you better reload there, buddy. So one move to get into position. One move to take the shot. He has a, a the extra range. I think that's all he got. And he is going to roll a d10 for his shooting. Here's what it looks like from his point of view. The second is going to fire at this feller behind the wall. Taking the trait, Eagle Eye, means that he has a target number of five. If he didn't have that trait, it would be eight. Unfortunately, he's shooting at a guy who is behind a wall. That means it's going to be at a plus two to the toughness number, so a seven or higher hits. And with a nine, he will hit. Then we roll for the wounding roll. And on a four, ah, but he is a killer. When he's shooting, that gets a plus one. So on the five, this figure becomes shaken. So we'll drop a shock marker down right next to that figure. And then that ends the seconds activation. We have a five of clubs on the part of the of the revolutionaries. We can move our drummer up to the wall. So that's gonna be a total of eight inches and he's done. And then we are gonna have a four of clubs. The royalists only have two guys who have not moved yet. Might as well move our farmer 10 inches up to the hillside. And then it's going to be the... And that's going to be a full... Well, the 10 inches. Yep, that's going to be about 10 inches. So he's hanging out on the hill. Then the leaders go, starting with this leader here, who says, you know, since everybody's going that direction, I'm going to come over here and get ready to hop that fence. Now, he is... Not gonna, he's basically nine inches away from the board, so he cannot escape the board. None of these guys are going to be able to escape via the road on the next turn, and they are going to have to deal with the oh, you know what? I did wrong here. All three rabble move on the same card, so what I really should have done, I'm just gonna bring oh boy, uh, so this woodcutter over here has a total of five inches. He's going to race, he is six inches from the woods, and then he can move an additional two inches. So we're just going to put him in the middle of these, the, on the middle of this, this hill here. I don't think you can see him. So he's up here on this hill. The other guy moved, uh, where did he go? Moved, just moved up to the tree, so he's ready to, to charge into melee. The last thing we need to do is move the leader over here, and he likewise... You know, given that that bridge blocks line of sight, he's not going to waste any time. He's just going to use all 10 of his inches to get to right there. Kind of trying to close the noose there. And that ends the turn. Everybody is in the shot at this point. You've got your Royalist second down here, Rabble. He's back about an inch from the edge. And then we've got a shooter that's loaded up here and another Rabble down there. And we need to shuffle them up. This may be another one of those quick scenarios that's over, largely because uh, of the way the dice came up. If the Vendee had had most of their guys down here and up there, maybe they would have had an easier time with things. Although that, I might be making excuses. That might have just been some tactical errors on my part. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, the, the, the entry points are far enough away that wherever you come on, you're close enough to them. There is our deck of cards, there is our cut, and I'm going to cut a second time. No cook in the books here, and for the Royalists, or the Revolutionaries rather, one, two, three, four, five, pretty good deal for the Revolutionaries. One, two, three, four, five for our Royalists. The King, well no, Aces get to go first, do we have anybody that wants to go so we call out, are there any kings? What do we want to use this ace for? 
We don't have any kings. We want to see what those guys are going to do first. So the first king to get thrown down is going to be for the forces loyal to the Black Jacobins. Um, the Sons of Voltaire. I don't know, but Black Jacobins? Am I getting my history right or am I getting confused? Are they just the regular Jacobins? I can never remember. Anyway, either way, we are going to start with... We might as well try to clear those woods of that woodcutter. We're going to bring one of our boys. Now, he's got two actions with the musket. And so what that's six inches away. Well, it's... Jumping the fence is only going to take him to here. Getting into melee is going to take him to here. And that is his second action. So now we're going to roll a d10 and a d8 and see what happens. we got to add some modifiers. The D10 is armed with a musket. He gets a plus one. Also, he charges. He gets another plus one. So he beats the five by one. And when you beat your opponent by one, your opponent has to make a wound check that is neutral. And on a four, if mounted, if prone, better weapon, defending a wall. Uh, he is not a woodsman, so he doesn't get a bonus for that. On a four, he becomes shaken. Not only that, but the French player, they, they're all French, what am I talking about? The royalist, the revolutionary has the option of trading places with the royalist, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So our revolutionary now has the inside track to get to safety on his next turn. That was for the king. Then we say, hey, how? what do we want to do for the queens? Hey, I want to do... Oh, wait. What? There's um, one of these cards lets you remove all shock markers. And that is what we're going to do. I think it's the queen of spades. If the miniature is shaken, remove all shock markers and take two actions. So, yeah, we're going to use our queen of spades to remove this shock marker right here and fight another round of combat. This time, the D10 has only a plus one. And with a difference of five, oh, bad things happen. Uh, no, he's still shaken. How about that? Wounding on a difference of five means that he is still shaken. And, but, the other nice thing for the, the revolutionary is that he can step an inch back and get just that much closer to escaping with his skin intact. Then we say, hey, how about 10s? Yeah, we got a 10 here on the royalist side. Who wants to go? And we'll bring over another... Mm -hmm. No, we're going we're gonna to do a full reload over here. Uh, do we, no, we might as well leave him. He can wait till the end. With a 10, we're going to bring... He has a line of sight. We could take the shot with him. It's a really long range. Uh, our riflemen are just way out of position. Let's see what we can do about fixing that. Um, I guess we'll bring this one. He probably should have come around this way, but he didn't know which way they were going, did, did he? Uh, for 10 inches, we can get to 9, 10. We get to right about... Here, except he needs to stay in cover too, so he has to stop right there at that gate. And that's it for the 10. Then we say, hey, how about nines? We get a nine of that. Oh, the heart goes first, though. The nine of hearts is going to allow this farmer to move seven inches. He's going to be able to make it up to, um, if, he, if he crosses the stream, he can move seven. And he can move 10 if he crosses over there. So he's going to come. He doesn't have line of sight, but he manages to race down the hill and through the ford. So he's getting closer, but that's all he can do. Then we say, now it's time for the nines on this side. And we're going to... Now, bear in mind, this guy only moves one inch. We're going to sacrifice him. He's going to race out with his shock marker. He can only move four inches. And then he can move another four to here... So he has broken his nerve and he's trying to escape and really he's just a decoy to try to draw some attention over here. 
And that is likely what's going to happen. But we got two more actions on the part of the revolutionaries. We'll go ahead and bring our... Hmm, we're going to bring this guy that's going to be four inches to there. Five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. He's going to go after this farmer in the woods as well. And now that farmer's in big trouble because his D8 is at a minus one. And the revolutionary is at plus two. One for the charge, one for the better weapon. And they tie. The tie means that the man who initiated the combat can decide whether they separate by an inch. So he backs off one... Wait a minute. I got that wrong, didn't I? The D10 is at plus two. That becomes a three. If you roll a one, so he drops his musket, this becomes a two. The revolutionary soldier wins by one, forcing a wound roll, but he drops his weapon. I'm going to put this... I have a blue marker that I'm going to use. If he wants to stop and pick up his musket, it's going to take an action. In the meantime, we do have to make a wound roll for that farmer. And on a four, he receives another shock. Are there any other bonuses on that? No, because he is at my, he is at he has to add one because of his status, and that means he takes a second shock marker. He is going to be at minus two on everything he does, which is unfortunate because it means this other this last action, the diamond goes before clubs, means the drummer boy decides he's going to get in on some of this action. And oh, by the way, the revolutionary can trade places, but he is unarmed. But the fact that he's still in melee means this Vondayan farmer is in big trouble. Let's just roll the dice and we'll add him up. That difference might be a lifesaver. The Vondayan axeman is going to be at a four because he is double shocked. The drummer, and he's going to go up to five because he's got the better weapon. Remember, the drummer just has a knife. So he's done. The drummer is going to go up by one for the charge, and he winds up with a result of three. So the drummer actually has lost by... Oh, and then he gets one more because he's got his buddy helping him out. So he winds up with a four. He is now lost by one, and we have to check on the wound chart for that rabble. And with a ten, the drummer goes out of action. Oh, man. How about... Well, does... Does, does the minus two affect the wound chart roll? I don't think it does, because the, the wound roll is rolled by the drummer, the loser of the melee, and he didn't have any shock or anything, so he just goes out of action. And our shocked guy has won. He can do... I don't think he can trade places because he's still stuck in combat with, with that other revolutionary. In fact, that's, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave him there. Then it's going to be the final two actions for the Vondeans. And we've got one guy right here with an axe who can move a total of... Wait a minute. How come he didn't get to act? Beca ah, I did it again, didn't I? I only did this melee combat. Ah, I for keep forgetting the rabble are three different guys. So this rabble was terrified and just forgot to act. This rabble ran across the stream to here. That's all he could do. Then the leader gets to go, and he's going to use his guy as cover. He can only move seven inches. He says, hey, 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 I know you're shocked. I'm going to come over here, so anybody that shoots at you has got to get by me. Then we can do the last two cards. The five and the six for... Oh, you know what? That's what I did. The rabble didn't get to go yet, right? Because he's going to reload for this whole turn. And then I moved that guy, that guy, that farmer, that farmer, the leader. Which means the rabble now have to go. That extra fight was for this guy. So our rabble can charge the nearest guy here. That rabble moves. This rabble has to fight. And that's where we're at. We'll do this fight over here where we've got a rabble with a better weapon and two shock. 
He is going to have to roll... Well, we're going to roll the dice and see what happens. Our rabble drops his axe and is now in big trouble because that becomes a four. He had the axe. It goes up to five. That's good. I'm sorry. Back up. This six stays at six. The rabble score goes down by two to negative one because of the two shock markers. But it goes back up to zero because he has had the better weapon, at least until he dropped it. Which means the rabble has to roll on the wound chart. And with a differential of six on those results, he's going to have to add uh, two to that roll of eight. And he is now wounded. So he falls down, and he's got two shock and a wound. And he gets pushed back an inch by the guy that, that dogged him. Then we have another melee over here where our rabble... Well, we'll roll the dice first. And we get the same result. Rabble drops his axe. He gets plastered with a result of zero, but he charged for one... Drops back down to zero because the soldier has the better weapon. Yeah, the musket's better than the axe, okay? The bayonet's better than the axe. So we get a total differential of eight. That means we're going to have to make a wound check with a... With a... Eight is a plus three on this die roll right here. And with a six plus three, that's a nine. He goes out of action. And it's not looking good for the rabble. But it is looking good for the end of the turn, and it's time to shuffle. I'd like to zoom in a little bit more here. But uh, the, the one, you know, this, this game is a great fun game with a lot of movement and a lot of fun. Not great for filming, though, because the action is so fast and furious. We are talking about a lot of camera changes in order to get everybody and everything into the game. Uh, you know, the, the nice thing about Igo Yugo systems is you can set up the camera for Igo and then take it down and set it up for Yugo. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm sorry, it's only four cards, isn't it? One, two, three, four. Both sides have lost one action. And that big roll is going to be very nice for the Vondeans because we do have line of sight from the woodsman over to here. With the ace, we're going to go... Oh, you know, we get... Two, we get. Well, we don't know this. We're going to go with the ace. We're going to go with... Um, let's bring this guy up five inches to here and take a shot at the leader. That's going to be our first one. Now, the leader is beyond 12 inches, so this will require an eight or better to hit. And that's going to be a miss. That leader, by the way, has melee veteran lunge. Nope, that's it. Okay. So that is just a straight miss. However, this woodsman is now out of ammunition. Then we have, that was on the ace. Then we have a jack. And this jack is going to be used by this shooter. Bear in mind, when you activate with a jack of spades, you're at plus one shooting. This shooter will also pause... To aim, meaning he gets a plus two on his shot, and he only has a target number of five. And he still manages to miss. And not only does he miss, but he has a misfire, and his weapon is now out for the game. I believe on a misfire on shooting... I don't want to steer you guys wrong. I'm going to grab the book. And then I, you know what's really nice about this game? It's The book is so short. It's really easy to find what you're looking for in it. This is one of those rare games where you can simply read the book and have a fun, engaging time. See these little guys here? Okay. Private Perkins activates and shoots. Um, also, it's easy to find things for, for reference. Most games are only good at one of those things. Something is terrible wrong. On a natural one, the miniature must take an additional two actions. That means this figure has to spend two actions to repair his musket, and then another two actions to load it. Nice shooting there, Tex. Then we have a whole lot of actions. Seven, I think. 
It's going to be three actions for the Vondeans. We're going to move two guys off the table. The leader says, I'm gone. And then we're going to move this guy off the table too. So we have got a total of three guys off the table before this seven of diamonds gets to go. And we, we don't have any real good options here. Uh, for the Royalists, I guess we could bring, huh, because he's, he's not in close melee anymore, and he's the last guy on the table. All we can kind of do is tighten this noose. These are the two guys that have not acted. No. Oh, you know, they do need one more card. Whoops. Okay, good, good news. It was a five, so that's... That's nothing much. Um, the rabbles still get a card. Just because you lost one rabble doesn't mean you don't still have two guys that need to get stuck in. So we're going to bring this rabble out 10 inches to right here. And then um, with this seven of diamonds, that's about all we can do. And then this fella right here, in order to get out of dodge, it's going to cost him five inches to get out of the woods. And then another five inches to get to here. And really, that is the end of the game. If we finish out the turn, this rabble is going to have to make a recovery roll. And on a result of a three, that would be his action for the, for the game. He is still wounded. Oh, but you know, you have to subtract one for each wound and shaken. That three minus three becomes a zero. He would be out of the game. So at the end of the day, the... Vondeans lost two unskilled laborers. Couple of couple of woodcutters here, strong bros, but not very good in a fight apparently. And in exchange, they lost the. They were able to take out one of the French Revolutionary Guards. The ambush that wasn't. Unfortunately, the dice didn't come up very good for the the Vondeans to, to do much. I think the other better way to do this scenario in retrospect is to shove the farmstead way on one side of the board and then bring in, then force, force the revolutionaries to charge through a cordon of troops. As it is, even with the extra guys, when you've got five guys in the middle headed for one point and eight guys around the perimeter all trying to defend one of two points, it really makes things a lot more complicated. There may be some other issues with the way the cards came up. If the if the first deal had gone better for the Vondean farmers, they might have had more luck getting into blocking terrain. Live and learn. Um, I kind of like this scenario. It's It's short. It's sweet. There's not a whole lot of like busy work going on and special rules and lava flows and you know things falling over and big sweeping changes. It's just a nice tight little ambush, the kind that you see in the sort of guerrilla warfare that occurs throughout the ages. Not the biggest battle, maybe not the most important one, but a heck of a lot of fun. And all thanks to. Our good friends at Wiley Games, pick up your copy, Fistful of Lead. I'll see you for more Fistful of Lead next week. Until then, I'm praying for you.